Well, in the whole of Ohio, there were some 10,000 odd earthworks and mounds that have been found. Now, not all of them were built at the same time. Some of them were built accretionally, others had parts added to them. Some earthworks had burials, some didn't. They didn't necessarily have alignments to stars or, or sun or anything like that. Some did, some didn't. We don't know what the Adena people called themselves. The name Adena comes from a state of Thomas Worthington down near Chillicothe, where there was a large mound that was excavated by William Mills in about 1903. This is a uh, copy of an 1883 map of Franklin County, and there's odd marks here. These actually mark prehistoric mounds and earthworks in different parts of the county. And there are several up here in the Clintonville area. This dot here on the property of Mr. H.C. Cook is the Dominion Land Company. There's a mound at the end of Rathbone Road where it meets the river. Uh, there's three mounds over on the property of the, the Deaf and Blind School. Uh, there's one on, on Webster Park. It was allegedly in somebody's backyard, but it seems to have disappeared. There's three down here near Olentangy Village. And on the very eastern side of Clinton Township, there is a circular earthwork at uh, Ferris and Westerville Road. Uh, if you go and look at it today, there's a pre-Civil War brick farmhouse in the middle of it, and it's just sitting there. Um, with a rather uncertain future. Mounds have had an uncertain future since the European arrival to this area. As neighborhood developments move forward, mounds in the Clintonville neighborhood found their future to be in question. The Dominion Land Company was developing this area between Glenmont and Euronia, putting a road through, and in that they found this Adena Indian Mound. The Dominion Land Company site was purchased by the Dominion Land Company in March of 1953 for $20,000. And they were going to be building a nice housing complex in that area. The mayor at the time did not really care for the idea of that. He would much rather have saved it for a park. So there was a public meeting and a petition throughout the citizens of Clintonville. And the citizens decided that they thought it was in their best interest to have the housing development go in. So the city council voted seven to zero in favor of the citizens and construction started in April of 1953. The site originally consisted of an embankment uh, wall that was around 2.9 uh, acres big and originally two mounds. When OHS got on site, one of the mounds was almost completely gone and most of the embankment wall in that area as well. There was a lot of bulldozing going on at the time and it was a salvage archaeology project to come in and try to get as much information before it was just completely gone. Initially they had agreed that they would be there for two weeks to do the work, but it ended up taking four months. Here is the uh, blueprint of the, the site before it was developed showing the um, embankment and the two mounds and under one of those mounds uh, was found this post mold pattern. Uh, these are the small pits where a, a piece of wood or a part of a tree would have been uh, put in. And it may have held a structure or a fence. And that's typical of not only Adena mounds but Hopewell mounds as well that they would build a structure for a purpose and when they were finished using the structure, they tore it down or burned it down or what have you, and then memorialized it by building a mound over top of it. With that particular structure in that mound, there was a burial that was found, and it was of a six to eight year old child. The thinking is that that would have been a structure that was used as a mortuary complex type thing. So once the posts had been removed or the wood had rotted away, people actually used the pits to put things into them and, and, and bury them down there. Here is somebody excavating within one of those post molds. So this gives you a little bit of scale. Each post mold is numbered so that they can keep track of, of what the sizes are of each one, the dimensions, how deep it is, etc. what might be found inside those post molds. The items found inside the two mounds and surrounding ditches were moved to the Ohio History Connection for study and storage. The assemblage consisted of about 90% pottery, and most of the material that was recovered was not from the mounds themselves. They were from the um, embankment uh, ditches on either side of the mound. So there's a thought that 
these deposits were left over from the funerary gathering. What is significant about the Dominion Land Company mounds are that there was a type of pottery that was excavated there. Uh, it's rather crude, thick, grit-tempered pottery, maybe granite-tempered. Uh, they didn't have handles on them, they had lugs, these sort of protruding, stubby, cylinder-shaped things that um, uh, obviously helped uh, to maintain control to, to hold it up. And they didn't put these on a fire and cook with them like we do a pot or a pan today, that these were probably set into a shallow trench and whatever was being cooked was cooked with hot rocks that were put into the pot with the food. And uh, here you can see a large piece of one of these pots. It's, it's, it's nearly an inch thick. You'll never confuse this with, with uh, Southwest pottery by any means. It's not painted. It's, it's got areas where it's been burned. It's wonderful archeological material. It's just not quote unquote pretty stuff. There were lots of animal bones that were left there as well, so there was evidently eating going on at the same site. There were pieces of tubular pipes, smoking pipes, and that sort of thing recovered. Uh, this is a small Adena-style point. Um, it's sort of like a time marker the, by the, the sort of ovate stem and the triangular blade. Uh, this is typical of the type of point that the Adena people would have made somewhere roughly between um, 500 BC and 100 AD. This is a uh, probably a, used as a roller pestle that they would uh, use this to crush uh, different things, acorns, walnuts. People have been here for thousands of years, over 10,000 years. It's a good place to be. You can't go anywhere without tripping over this stuff. The Adida people probably tended patches of plants, sunflower, Kinopodium and things, that, but they, I don't know if you can really call them farmers. The uh, area had the, the rivers, the floodplains, a very rich environment with lots of different plants and flowers and trees and uh, animals to eat. So it was a very good area to live in, uh, easy to transport themselves around on the waterways. Archaeologists have identified over 10,000 mounds in Ohio. How many more mounds were there that have been lost over time due to construction and farming? We'll never know. What we do know is that we're still learning about the people who made the mounds, their ideas about architecture and burials. All that makes the Hopewell and Adena cultures of the past some of our most enduring neighbors. How we protect the mounds in the future is still a question mark as our communities grow.